Yes. Uh, this time I'm going to start a new series on the Phoenix Live View. So I've been patiently waiting and watching uh, what's going on with Live View, and I've actually started using it in some projects, and I'm really quite impressed. And as I'm looking online, I don't see a whole lot of um, more in-depth tutorials about how to use Live View. And so I, I think I'm going to start to work on that and show you guys some tricks and some things I picked up. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I actually set up Live View, which is a little bit different than other people. But I think it makes life a lot easier. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I do it and I'll also talk about why I do it this way. And so go ahead and let's get started. Now we have a brand new project as you can see uh, behind me. It's a brand new project. There's nothing special about it. I haven't changed anything. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add Live View to our project by adding it to our dependencies. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our dependencies I'm using the latest version of Phoenix. And I just need to add, uh, I have it queued up on the other side. I'm going to copy and paste it. Add Live View. Uh, at the moment, uh, I'm recording this. It's not on Hex yet, so you have to get it from GitHub. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to add this to our dependencies list. We run mix steps git to grab it. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a signing salt because what happens is that our initial uh, data that we put into our live view will get uh, encrypted. And so we need to add a signing salt in order to uh, encrypt that. So what we need to do is we need to just add, uh, if we run mix phoenix uh, dot gen dot secret and we tell it 32 as in the size 32 it's going to make our signing salt for us and what we do is we just go to here we add an extra option live view and in here we have another option called signing salt and we just grab this Copy this, paste it into here. There we go. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually add the live view flash, which is quite uh, simple too. We're just going to just, we have to go to our router. We add a plug for Phoenix. Live view flash into our browser pipeline. Okay, and now in order to actually call Live view, we need to also uh, add some functions to our controllers, our router, and our view. <clears throat> and so then what we need to do is we go to our uh, web file within lib uh lib hello live view web right here and we need to add a couple things so one is in the controller i'm just gonna offline i'm gonna grab this this is all on the uh, github page by the way so in the controller section we need to add an import into the live render from Phoenix Live View Controller. Now in the view, we need to uh, add in an import also from Live View so that we have a live render. Again, there's two different versions. And one last thing is in the router in the section, we're gonna add this in. Okay, now this is where I'm going to change just a little bit from how uh, normal uh, how normal um, people set up Live View, or at least I hadn't seen this before, but I found it very, very useful. So what I do is, uh, because I have a lot of apps that I work on that require Git text, and I also want to use the routes, 
So I found a way to make my life easier uh, is to actually take this, this view part, sorry, take this section and grab it, copy it, and underneath there, above router, I'm gonna paste it again, but I'm gonna change it to say live view instead and we're not going to need this part but we will need use phoenix live view i don't use this one but uh, I actually do use this, which I'm grabbing from offline, which is link. So I can use the link function within my live view. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything else. Yep, we need the error helpers. We need the git text for our, our, our app. Uh, we don't need this because this is coming from Phoenix live view. And we need the routes. And that looks like everything. So this is just a convenience. Uh, and as we'll see later, we're going to actually use this. So we're going to need this no matter what. Every time we make a live view, this is just some convenience functions I'm pulling in. Uh, same with this. So we don't need to call this by long name or whatever. Um, and we can also pull in some of the HTML, which I end up using sometimes. And also I can use the error helpers within my code and also the get text for my multi uh, for my multi language apps and also the routes functions so we can get those two. So this is a major change from what people usually do. Just wanted to walk you guys through that. Now back on to uh, the rest of the app and how we set it up. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to the endpoint. Okay, and we need to add in socket connection to live Phoenix live view socket. Okay, now we've finished with the server side. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up uh, the actual connections. So we go to our app.js file. And the next thing we need to do is we need to import live view, sorry, live socket from Phoenix live view. And before I forget, there is one thing we need to do. So you see this is grayed out. I almost forgot this step. We need to go to our package.json file. Okay, we grab this, copy this, we change this part to be live view, and we can copy this, add this here. And then what I need to do is I need to do npm install prefix assets. So that way it'll pick up the JavaScript within the Phoenix Live View. Okay, perfect. Added that package in for us. Now if I go back to here, I can save this. Now if I go back to here, this should come in okay. Now to finish this, we need to do, I'm gonna use a const. Uh, live socket, sorry, new live socket, connected to slash live, which would be the same as the endpoint here. And then we tell it to connect 
Okay. Now another thing that we need to do, which is very important for us as we're developing, is we need to go to the dev config. And we need to tell it to recompile our live uh, app, live apps. So what we can do is we can grab this. Oh, wait a minute, it looks like it already has it. That's actually good. We need to worry about that part. So ba, 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 live views. Um, that seems to be right. So this is a brand new project. I never actually start from a brand new app. It looks like they're already looking for it, which is perfect. So yeah, that's exactly what we need. So it's this has already been done. Otherwise, you just need to add this to your uh, project. So just look for the live folder. It's convention to put your live uh, Phoenix live view inside the live folder. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is if I come into my CSS, I'm going to import the uh, Phoenix Live View Assets CSS live view CSS so that way we're going to get um, some styling from the live view from specific classes that they add in so you see when you're connected when you're disconnected etc okay so this is enough uh, for us to get started as long as you're using Chrome and, and not using IE an old version of IE this should just work so now if we run our project We should see that we are connected over a live view socket. So we have two socket connections, and that's through live view. So everything's working fine. Uh, this is Alan from Langora, and this is our first video in our series about Phoenix Live View. And this is just how to set up uh, Live View and also how I set up Live View. So uh, we're going to have a couple more videos about this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And see you then. Bye.